Good morning. My name is Kelda Hedstrom, and I work with the ESRI training team here in Redlands, California. I want to welcome you all to today's live training seminar, Understanding ARC SDE Table Relationships. The topics we're going to be covering today include a general overview of the different ways available to you in ArcGIS to associate your tables together, including joins, relates, relationship classes, ArcIMS joins, and Arc SDE views. We'll also take a look at the different options you have available to you for performing joins with your data, including inner and outer joins. And finally, we'll look at what you can do to optimize the performance of your table relationships through the use of specifying where your joins take place, building indexes, and building statistics on your tables. The format of the seminar will be 20 minutes of slides, followed by a software demonstration, and then a short review question and answer period. Effective database design includes storing data in multiple tables as a way to organize your database. In order to get to the data in all of your tables, links or associations can be created between your tables. And these links and associations are created between common columns with, between the tables you want to link together. So let's take a, a look at the example that we have here. We want to make an association between the POL block groups table and the POL census table. Well, we can choose to link the tables together through the BKG column, which is the common column to both of these tables. Associations can be established between multiple data formats. For example, I can create a link between a shapefile and an ARC info table, or I can create a link or an association between a feature class and a personal geodatabase and a table in an ARC SD enterprise database. And finally, these relationships can be temporary. For example, they can only exist within a specific ARC map document, or they can be permanent in that they are available to multiple geodatabase users. There are different ways we can create relationships between our tables and ArcGIS. Beginning with ArcMap, we can build relationships by joining our tables together, relating our tables together, or by creating relationship classes. In ArcMap, there are various dialogues to help you step through the process of creating, an association, creating associations between your tables. Here we have an example of a join dialog, and this is where you're going to specify which columns you want to use to create the join upon, which tables you want to use to create joins with, and again, the columns from the tables that you want to join together. You're going to specify all of this in this join dialog. And we'll take a look at this in the first demo. We can also use ArcIMS to create associations between our tables. And these associations are created using the query and spatial query tags in ArcIMS Axel or map configuration files. And we'll take a look at these further on in the, in the presentation as well. And finally, we can build relationships between our ArcSDE tables and ArcSDE feature classes by creating ArcSDE spatial and non-spatial views. And we will learn how to create views later on in the presentation as well as in the demo. And all of the relationships mentioned in this presentation can be applied to non-ArcSDE data, except for the ArcSDE spatial views and non-spatial views. But for today, we're going to mainly just be discussing ArcSDE data. So let's start by examining the first type of relationship that we can create in ArcMap, which is a join. When tables are joined in ArcMap, all the columns from both tables are virtually appended together into one large table. This does not affect your source data, however, meaning that the tables are not appended together in the database, but it's just a temporary association that you can create right in your ArcMap map document. So let's take a look at this example. Here I have a parcels feature class that I want to join to my land use attribute table. Well, after examining both of the tables, we can see that we have a common column of land use in both of the tables. So we can choose to join on this land use column. And once we create the join, we'll get one large table called parcels that has all of the columns from both of the tables placed in this parcels table. And then we can see that the naming convention is what is going to specify which columns come from which table. So on the first column, we see parcels.parcels ID. That is telling us that we're getting this parcels ID column from the parcels table. If I scroll over a little bit further, I'll see the land use.lu desk column. And I can see that that is coming from the land use table because it says land use.lu desk. 
So I'm getting this LU desk column from my land use table. Joins are temporary associations that can be saved in individual map documents. And this is nice because it allows you to create multiple joins between one feature class and between attribute tables. So here we have an example of a parcels being joined to the land use attribute table, and we can save this in one map document. Well, I could create a second map document using the same parcels feature class, and this time I might want to join it to a zoning attribute table. So I can have, create multiple relationships between my, my tables and different map documents. Joins can also be applied across multiple data formats. I could join a D-based table to a coverage if I want to. And this allows you to create joins between all of your tables, regardless of the data format that they are stored in. One advantage of a join is that it can be used to symbolize or label upon. When we join this parcels feature class to the land use attribute table, I can now symbolize my parcels based on this land use LU description code or column if I'd like to. Or I could label it based on that. Without the join, though, I would not be able to symbolize based on this land use description column because my uh, data would be in two separate tables. Another advantage to using a join is that they can be used to complete a data set. For example, I have GPS data points feature class and I have a table of attributes about these points. Well, I can create a join to put these two tables together and then I can export this table out into a different format like a shapefile or a geodatabase feature class to make a permanent data set. Let's take a look at the second type of relationship you can create in ArcMap, which is a relate. When you choose to relate your tables together, a relationship is established between the tables. And unlike a join, the columns from the tables are not appended together. Your tables are viewed separately. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have a coffee feature class and a percent owner attribute table. Both of these tables have a common column of coffee ID, which we can use to create the relationship upon. But as you see, once we create this relationship or this relate, our tables remain separate. And I can make selections from the coffee table and view these the related records down in my percent own table. And to do this, I have to go to the options button, scroll down to the related tables, and scroll over to the coffee percent own relate that I've created. This will open up my percent on table for me and this will also reflect any selections that I've made in the coffee feature class. So if I want to instead of looking at the Java Quick you know the, the records that are related to the Java Quick coffee shop I can select the percolator for example and then I need to go back to options again down to the related tables and refresh the relationship so now I'll be able to see the first record in the percent on table will be highlighted to show me the relationship. So now I can see the percolator is 100% you know, owned by owner ID number 40. And relates just like joins are temporary associations saved in a map document. And they can also be apply, applied a, across multiple data formats. And it is advantageous to use relates when you have redundant information in both tables and you do not want to make one large table with repeating values. Relates are often used with lookup tables to maintain a relationship between the table that has all the descriptive information and the table with the corresponding values. So I could have my parcels feature class with a zone code column and relate it to a zoning table that's going to have all the zoning descriptions for my parcels so I don't have to store all that redundant information in my parcels feature class. The third type of relationship that can be created in ArcMap is a relationship class. And a relationship class behaves just like a relate in that you've just created an association between your two tables. However, a relationship class is permanent. It's a permanent connection between your tables until it's physically removed. This allows you to create a persistent connection between your tables that can be accessed in, by many GeoDatabase users or in multiple ArcMap documents. And Relationship classes are created in Arc Catalog by right-clicking on the geodatabase that you want to create your relationship class in, choosing New, and then choosing New Relationship Class. And you can set it up, you know, give it a name, and specify which 
tables will be participating in the relationship class. And then you will see a permanent relationship, the permanent relationship symbolized and stored right along with the other featured classes and tables in the GEO database. And unlike a relate, a relationship class is only accessible to one GEO database, meaning that you can only create a relationship class between tables that exist within the same GEO database. You cannot create a relationship class uh, with tables that exist in two separate GEO databases. And you as the user have the ability to specify the rules as to how you would like your tables to relate together in the relationship class. For example, say that I have created a relationship class between a fire station feature class and a table of fire station employees. After I create my relationship class, I can set up a relationship rules that allow me to specify that each fire station has to have exactly five to ten employees. And then I can bring this into ArcMap and this will be reinforced in ArcMap for me. And finally, relationship classes can be used in editing data. When you select a feature that is participating in a relationship class, you can edit the properties of all the objects that are related to it, as well as breaking up or creating new relationships between all of your features. Now that we've taken a look at what type of relationships we can create in ArcMap, we'll move on to examining ArcIMS and ArcSD joins. But first, Let's take a minute to look at what is actually happening when we create a join between our tables. When we build joins, the software is actually using SQL, or Structured Query Language Statements, to query the database tables to find the table records you're looking for. SQL is the language that is being used to communicate with the database, depending upon the database you're using, either Microsoft, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, or Informix to go out to the tables in the database and select and join them together for you. So here we have an example. We have a join between a coffee feature class and an owner attribute table. Well, we have three columns from the coffee feature class and two columns from the owner table. Now, as you can see, we've chosen to join the tables together based on the own ID column from each table. Well, when we create this join in ArcMap, Behind the scenes, this SQL statement is being created, and it's using the select, from, and where clauses. The, the SQL select clause is used to tell the database which columns you would like returned. So as you can see here, we've chosen to return the name column, the coffee ID column, and the own ID column from the coffee feature class. And we've chosen to return the own ID column and the owner name column from the owner attribute table. The from clause tells the database which tables you'd like the columns from. This is where we specify that we'd like all the columns that I've just mentioned from the coffee feature class and the owner attribute table. Finally, the where clause identifies the condition that you want met or what you want to do with the columns. In this example, we want to join together the coffee feature class and the owner attribute table based on the own ID columns from each table. And as you might have noticed, each column has the name of the database and the table that is coming from in front of it separated by periods. This is required by the database to alleviate confusion as to which tables and columns you're choosing from inside of the database. And you can let ArcGIS software create these SQL statements for you, or you can create them manually inside of the database that you're working with to select data or join your tables together. Okay, now we have a polling question. Are you familiar with ArcSDE views? Please answer yes or no by clicking in the appropriate button in the polling window. Now that we know how the software talks to the database by using SQL statements, let's take a look at how ArcIMS joins tables together. ArcIMS joins are created using ArcXML, or Extensible Markup Language. Using ArcXML, tabular joins can be performed within the Axle or Map Configuration file. Joins are performed using the spatial query or query tags. The spatial query and query tags perform the same task, except that the spatial query tag can handle spatial queries, meaning you can return features, um, you can return features, you can buffer your features, you can do any type of uh, analysis you like to do with your spatial features with the spatial query tag, but you cannot do this with the query tag. The query tag, you can only return attribute information. But to establish a join in ArcIMS, you need to include two attributes as well. The first 
attribute you need to include is the SQL WHERE clause. And this WHERE clause establishes the common fields in both of the tables that you want to join together. The second attribute you need is the JOIN TABLES attribute. And the JOIN TABLES attribute establishes which table or tables you are joining together by specifying the name of the table or tables that you're joining to the first table. So let's take a look at an example of this. Here we have the spatial query tag. And we want to join together the FIPS column from the city feature class that's in the DB database. We want to join this column to the FIPS column from the school's attribute table that's also in the DB database. And we want to and we'll use the join tables attribute to specify that we want to join the school's attribute table to the city feature class. And it'll look the same in the query tag as well. You know, again, we're going to specify that we want to join together the parcels in the zoning table, and we're going to use the zone code columns from each table to do this. And then again, with the join tables attribute, we're going to specify that we want to join the zoning table to our parcels table. When creating ArcIMS joins, you can only join shapefiles to DBF tables or ArcSDE feature classes that have spatial data to ArcSDE tables with non-spatial data. You cannot join across data formats, and you cannot join across directories or databases. Both your shapefile and DBF table must be in the same folder or directory, and both of your ArcSD feature classes and tables must be in the same geodatabase. Well, it looks like 79% of you are not familiar with ArcSDE views, so let's go ahead and take, at them, take a look at them in a little more depth to make sure that we're all understanding what they are. ArcSDE views allow you to associate multiple ArcSDE tables together to show only the columns that you specify from each table. You can create spatial or non-spatial views, but views can only be made with one ArcSDE feature class that includes spatial data or a shape column at a time. When creating a spatial view, you must include the shape column from the ArcSDE feature class. If the shape column is not included or if the view is made between two attribute tables, then the view will be non-spatial. Views are just permanent SQL queries stored in the database. A view references a collection of related tables and is a way to filter out or look at the subset of data from different tables. Views can be accessed like a table or a feature class in ArcMap. If the view has a spatial column, then it will behave like a feature class and that it will be able to be uh, symbolized, labeled, and queried in ArcMap. If the view does not have a spatial column, if it's a non-spatial view, then it will behave just like a table in ArcMap and you'll be able to join it or relate it to other tables if you'd like to. You can also uh, change the SQL statement of your view to give you different data. We can go right into the database and change the select from or where clauses to pull up different columns from different tables or change how our columns have been joined together. And let's take a look at an example of how you're going to create a view. You're going to create a view using the SDE table o create view command. And with this command, there are specific parameters you need to include to create your view. The first parameter is the capital T parameter. This allows you to specify the name that you want to name your view. The lowercase t parameter specifies which tables you want to get your data from. The lowercase c parameter specifies which columns that you want to include in your view from all of your tables, or from the tables that you're pulling from to create your view. The lowercase w parameter specifies how you want to join your tables together. So this is where you're going to set which columns you want to join your tables together on. The capital D parameter allows you to specify where your view is being created and which database. The lowercase u parameter is where you specify the user who's creating the view and the lowercase p parameter specifies the password for the user who's creating that view. And we'll take a look at this. We'll create one in the, in the demo. User read only, and then ArcSD clients such as ArcMap can't directly edit your views. However, you can change the underlying source data, and this will, these changes will be available to you when you refresh your views. Views can be created on, they have to be created actually, on non-versioned or non-editable tables. 
to avoid returning inconsistent or incomplete results from your database. And you have to keep track of this manually because the software will not stop you from creating a view on a version table. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the relationship types that we've just talked about. We're going to go into ArcMap to go ahead and do this. And I have created a map document called ArcSDE Table Relationship Demo for you. And I've added three uh, data frames in it just to kind of keep everything organized so we can step through um, the demo I've created for you today. So the first thing we're going to do is create an ArcMap join. So let's take a look at this parcels feature class that I have and this zoning attribute table that I have. When I look at both of my tables, I see that I have a common column of zone code. So I can use this zone code column to create a join between both of my tables. So let's go ahead and do that. Before I create the join though, I'm going to go ahead and clear my selection just to make sure everything's fresh for when we create our join. I can do that by going to the options button and choosing clear selection. I'll do that for both tables. And then we'll go ahead and create the join. And to do this, I'm going to right click on my parcels feature class, go to joins and relates, and choose, choose join. Then I'm going to choose which column in my parcels feature class I want to join on. And in this case, it is the zone code column. Then I'm going to select which table I want to join to my parcels feature class, which is the zoning table. And then I'm going to specify which column in my zoning table I want to join to my parcels feature class, which is zone code. And then I'm going to click OK at the bottom of the join uh, data dialog window. But it, this will be off of your screen. But I'm pressing OK. And once I do that, you can see that all of the columns from the zoning attribute table have been appended up into my parcels feature class table. So now you know, we see that we have all the columns from the parcels and all the columns from the zoning tables up here together. And we can tell which columns come from which tables by looking at the naming convention. Again, here we have parcels.zoneCode. So this zone code column is coming from the parcels table. If I scroll over, I see the zoning dot zone code column. So this zone code column is actually coming from the zoning attribute table. So that's how, you, again, you're going to tell where your columns are coming from, which tables are coming from. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to create a relate now, see the difference. But to do that, I'm going to have to remove my join. So to remove my join, I'm going to go back to my parcels feature class. I'm going to right click on it, go back to joins and relates, and this time choose remove joins. And then I can either remove my individual join or just choose remove all joins. And we can see now the parcels feature class or table has gone back to the original, how it was originally. The, the tables that were appended have been removed. So to create my relate, this time again I'm going to right click on my parcels feature class, go to joins and relates, and this time choose relate. Again I'm going to specify which column I want to make my relate on. So I'm going to scroll down to zone code, this is in the parcels feature class. And I'm going to choose which table I want to relate to my parcels feature class, which is the zoning table. And then I'm going to choose which column in the zoning table I want to use to relate to my, my parcels feature class, which again is zone code. And then I'm going to give my relate a name. So I'm going to call it parcels zoning relate. And it's important to give your relate a unique name so that if you have multiple tables and feature classes in one of your data frames, you won't get confused as to which tables are related to each other, which feature classes are related to each tables. So it's a good way to keep everything organized. So I can click OK. And notice that nothing really happened. It doesn't look like you know, anything occurred because the, the columns from zoning were not appended up into my parcels feature class. But there is a relationship there, so let's see if we can and, uh, take a look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and select a couple of records from my parcel feature class, and then I'm going to go to Options, down to Related Tables, and choose that, that relationship that I just created, or that relate. So again, this is why it's important to, to properly name these, because if I add a whole bunch of relates 
and they were just named relate one, relate two, and relate three, I would have no idea of which tables I um, were, were are referring to and with relate one. So I, now I can click on my relate, and I can see the appropriate record has been highlighted down in my zoning attribute table. So say I want to uh, choose a different set of records and see their relationship. So I can go and switch my record choice up here in my partials feature class, but as you can see, that has not automatically been updated down into my zoning attribute table. I have to refresh or manually update my selections. So I again have to go to the options button on the parcels feature class, go to related tables, and then choose that relate that I just created. And this will refresh my relationship so now I can see I have the you know, cor correct uh, selection made in my zoning attribute table. So now I'm going to go ahead and again clear my selection just to clear everything out. We go into options, clear selection. And this time we're going to go ahead and take, oh, I'm going to remove my relate first actually, excuse me. Go to joins and relates, go down to remove relates and remove that relate I just created. And now we're going to take a look at a, an ArcSD spatial view. So I'm going to activate my spatial view data frame. And to create, if you recall, to create a spatial view, we have to use the SDE table dash o create view command. So I'm going to activate my command prompt, and now I'm going to type in SDE table dash o create view. Then I'm going to enter in the rest of the parameters that we talked about in the slides. So the first parameter I'm going to enter in is capital T. This is where I'm going to specify the tables that I'm going to use in my view. So I'm going to use the parcels and the zoning table or tables. Next I'm going to, oops, excuse me, excuse me, I just mixed those up for you. The capital T is where you specify the name of the view that you want to create. So I'm going to actually type in parcel view. So that's the name I want to give my relate. I'm just a little bit ahead of myself. So the next parameter, the lowercase t is where I'm going to type in the actual tables that I want to use in my uh, view. So this time is when I type in parcels and zoning. The next parameter that I'm going to enter in is the lowercase c parameter. And this is where you specify the columns that you want to include in your view. So I'm going to include my parcels shape column. So this is what's going to make this be a spatial view because I'm going to include that shape, that geometry information from my parcels feature class. And I'm also going to include my zoning description column from my zoning attribute table. Next, I'm going to specify how I'm going to join my tables together. And I'm going to join my tables together using the parcels using the zone code column from both my parcels and zoning uh, tables. Then the next parameter I'm going to specify is where my uh, view will be taking place. So I'm going to be creating it in the Wilson database under the user Kelda and Kelda's password is my password. Okay, I'm going to hit return and see that my view has been successfully created. So now I can go back into ArcMap I can, and then I can add my view into my map document. So I choose my parcel view, hit add, and there you can see we have my uh, view that we've just created. But notice that one of the parcels is missing. The parcel is missing because of the type of the join that we have just created when, um, or used when creating this view. And by default, when you create an ArcSD view, you create an inner join. And we're going to discuss what an inner join is in the next topic. But for now, let's take a moment to review what we've learned and answer any questions that you might have up to this point. So we have just taken a look at some of the different types of relationships that we can create between our tables in ArcGIS. We've learned how to create a join, which is going to virtually append your columns together from both of your tables. We've learned how to create a relate, which is 
going to keep both tables separate, but it'll create a relationship between your two tables, and then you have to refresh your relationship after you make different selections. We talked about relationship classes. And they allow you to create a permanent relationship between different tables within the same geodatabase, which is accessible to multiple geodatabase users. We also learned how the software communicates with the database through SQL statements and how they're used to select and join our tables together. We also talked about ArcIMS and how you can use the spatial query or query tags as well as the SQL where clause attribute and the join tables attribute to join your shapefile DVFs and your ArcSD feature classes and tables together. And finally, we learned that an ArcSD view is just a permanent stored SQL query as well as how to create them with the SD table o create view command. And that it is very important to make sure that you have everything spelled correctly and qualified correctly, otherwise you will not be able to create your view. So to answer some questions for us today, we have Brenda Simmons, who is a colleague of mine in the training department. Go ahead, Brenda. Good morning. I have Janet from Florida, and she says, can we create an SDE view by simply using the SQL statement like creating a regular view? Or I think she's asking a regular view. And the answer is no. Um, when, you're d when you're creating the SDE view, you're creating a spatial view. So it's expecting to have one of your uh, tables with a spatial column on it. And um, SQL Server or uh, C uh, programming in SQL is very powerful, but it doesn't quite understand uh, about that spatial column. So you need to use the Arc SDE uh, table or the SDE table minus O create view command um, to create your spatial views. Um, Victor in Germany asks, can I import tables from Access 97? Um, we have the ability to uh, do joins and relates with Access tables. I'm not quite sure about that version 1997, but at the end of the uh, seminar, check back in a couple of weeks and Kelda is going to post uh, with the uh, publication of, of her seminar answers to these questions. So we'll make sure that she looks at that particular version to see if, if it's compatible. Uh, Daisy in Tennessee asks, do I have to join a table to select from it? No. If you have a table in your ARC map, um, table of contents in your document, you can do the select by attribute and work with, um, with your tables without doing joins or relates to any sorts of geometry. Um, Michael in Calgary asks, can I create permanent relationships from non-database data sets, and yes, you can. All of our shapefiles, dbase uh, tables, the ARC info tables. Uh, if you can make a connection in ARC catalog uh, to Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, or Informix uh, using ARC SDE, an OLDB connection, or a direct connect, then you have access to those tables, and you can create joins and relates to um, other tables as well. And finally, um, Bill from Billings asks, with ARC SDE for coverages, Oh, I'm sorry, he asked, what versions of ARC SDE does this apply to? Kelda's presentation is completely with eight, um, ARC GIS 8, ARC SDE 8 technology, and I believe on her machine she has ARC SDE 8.2 uh, loaded. And Kelda, you got a question? Now let's take a question from Tammy in Virginia. Can you symbolize on a relationship class? You cannot symbolize directly on a relationship class. You can bring that into ArcMap and you can join, create a join and then you can symbolize, but you cannot symbolize directly with a relationship class. You have to create that join between your tables. Okay, let's move on to the second topic where we're going to take a look at a couple of different options you have for joining your tables together, including inner and outer joins. Let's revisit the first demo to find out why that parcel was missing from our parcel view. Let's look at the the parcels and zoning tables that we have here. We created the view by joining the zone code columns from both the parcels feature class and the zoning attribute table. In the parcels feature class, there's a parcel with a zone code of COM, but in the zoning attribute table, there is no zone code of COM and there's no zoning description of COM. And when we created the inner, uh, the inner join, we only return those records that have a match in both columns. So in this case, because there was no match for the com parcel, it was dropped out or left out when the join was created. Because by default, when you create an ARC SDE view, you use an inner join to link the tables together. And again, this is why our parcel dropped out in the parcel view. So let's take a look at the SQL statement that is used to when you create this inner join. 
Again, we have the select clause. This is going to choose the columns to, that you want to appear in the view. And in this example, using the star means we want to select all the columns from, all the from both of the tables to create our view. The from clause is going to specify the parcels that we want to use the parcels uh, feature class in our view. And then we're going to use the inner join clause to specify that we want to use an inner join to join the zoning and the parcels tables together. Then when you use the on clause, you're specifying that you want to complete the inner join using the zone code columns from both of the parcels and the, the zoning uh, attribute table. And you can go into the database and change the SQL statement at any time to be a different type of join. And we're also going to take a look at an example of an inner join in the next couple slides. Because you can also create inner joins using ArcMap. And to do this, when you're in that join dialog that we looked at in the first demo, you're going to actually click on the advanced button, which is down near the bottom of the dialog. And then you can choose the keep only matching records option, and ArcMap will actually perform the inner join for you. Another type of join that can be created between our tables is an outer join. And an outer join will return all records from the tables, regardless if they have a match or not. So to be able to perform an outer join in ArcMap, again, you're going to press the advanced button in the join dialog, and this time you're going to choose keep all records. And an outer join is what ArcMap is going to do by default. So if you don't press that advanced options dialog, it's just going to create an outer join for you. And unlike inner joins, there are three different kinds of outer joins you can perform. You can perform a left outer join, a right outer join, or a full outer join. And we're going to take a look at exactly what these are in the next slide. And with ArcSD views, you have a choice of using all three types of outer joins, either a left outer join, a right outer join, and a full, or a full outer join. However, ArcMap only supports the left outer join. And when an outer join is created, the SQL statement looks a little different than the SQL statement from the inner join. Again, you have the select statement, which is going to select the columns that you want from your, the tables that you're working with. You've got the from statement, which is going to specify that you want to start with the parcels feature class, and you want to left outer join now the zoning table to the parcels feature class. So this time, instead of saying inner join, we're going to use the clause left outer join to perform a left outer join between our tables. And then again, we're going to use the on clause to specify that we want to join the two tables based on the zone code from each of our tables. So let's take a look at how these inner and outer joins work. Again, ArcMap supports inner joins and left outer joins only, whereas ArcSDE views support all four types of joins. So here we have an example of two source tables, table one and table two. Let's take a look at the results that are returned when we use various types of joins to put these tables together. So when we create an inner join, again recall that when you inner join, only records that have matches in both tables are returned. So that's why when we create an inner join between these two tables, we only get records number two and records three as our results because record number one does not from table one does not have a match in table two and record number four in table two does not have a match in table one. So let's take a look at outer joins. Again, when you perform an outer join, all records are returned regardless if they have matches in both tables or not. So when we specify that we want to create a left outer join, we're going to use all the records from table one and join them to table two, so we'll only get the matches from table two, but we'll keep all of the data from table number one. When we specify a right outer join, we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to keep all of the data from table number two, but only keep or return those records that match from table number one. So this time, that's why we have all records two, three, and four from table two, and only those that match from table one, which is two and three. And finally, you can create a full outer join. This is where you keep all the data from both tables, regardless if they have matches or not. So that is why we have records 1, 2, and 3 from table 1, and records 2, 3, and 4 from table 2. Inner joins tend to process quickly, but can end up leaving out records if they are not properly matched in both tables, as we saw with the 
in the first demo with the partial view. Outer joins can be used when you want to keep a historical reference of all of your data to maintain all the attributes from one table, even if they don't have a match in another table. Or as we saw in the, the demo example, it would be more appropriate to use the left outer join to, to maintain and make sure we keep all those parcels. In addition to considering join types, you have to take cardinality into account when creating table relationships. Cardinality describes how many records in one table are related to how many re records in another table. All relationships between tables must follow rules for connecting together and that they fall under specific cardinality choices. So we can connect tables together that have a one-to-one -one relationship, so we have one parcel that has one owner in an attribute table, or you can use one-to-many cardinality where you have one parcel that has many owners. This you could represent this in the real world when you have one power pole that has many transformers, for example. You can also have many to one, which is many parcels having one owner. Or this is what we actually just looked at in the demo, where we had many parcels that went to one zoning code in our zoning table. And finally, you can have many to many, where you have many parcels that have many owners, which might be more realistic of a commercial situation where you have many buildings to many owners. It's very important to understand the cardinality or relationships between your data before you, you uh, create a join or a relate because as we'll see in the next slide this, this will affect which choice you make. Depending upon the software you're working with, either ArcMap, ArcSDE, or ArcIMS, there are different supported ca cardinality choices available to you. And there's no coincidence as to why, again, we've been using a many-to-one relationship between the parcels and zoning feature class in the demo. And that's because both ArcMap joins and Relate support this type of cardinality. So ArcMap joins only support one-to-one -one or many-to-one cardinality. If you try to create a join with one-to-many cardinality, you're, you will have records that will be cut off because ArcMap does not support that. You can also, with Relates, you can create uh, relate using any type of cardinality that you like, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, or many-to-many. -many. They're all supported in ArcMap. Relationship classes, you can create a relationship class with either one-to-one -one cardinality, one-to-many cardinality, or many-to-many -many cardinality. And with ArcSD views, you can create a view with any type of cardinality. However, one-to-many cardinality and many-to-many -many cardinality is not supported in ArcMap. Same with ArcXML or ArcIMS joins. You can create a join with any type of cardinality, but those with one-to-many or many-to-many -many are not going to be supported in ArcMap. So now that we've learned what inner and outer joins are, let's take a look at how to create them as well as how cardinality comes into play when creating table relationships. So I'm going to go back into ArcMap and begin by taking a look at the spatial view that we created in the first demo. So let's open up the original parcels table and the zoning table and again let's look at what we have here. Again in this parcels table we have that com parcel which just does not have a match down in the zoning attribute table and again by default in ArcSDE you're going to create an inner join so when we created that view that com parcel dropped out because it doesn't have a match in this zoning attribute table. So let's see if we can do something about that. Let's go ahead and manually change the SQL statement of the view to create an outer join between the tables so all of our parcels will be accounted for. And on my machine, I'm using Microsoft SQL Server 2000. So to do this, I'm going to open up my SQL Server Enterprise Manager. And I'm going to open up my Wilson database because that's where I created my view. Click on the views. And you can see it's not here right now. To be able to see it, I have to refresh my views. Now I can see my parcel view. To be able to get to the SQL statement, I have to open it up or, or go to design view. And now I will be able to see the, the SQL statement that was used in creating the view. So I'm going to just go ahead and reformat it a little bit so we can see it a little easier. And as you can see, we have the select statement selecting the shape column and the description column from our tables. We have the from statement which is going to say we want to join from the parcels feature class and then we want to do an inner join on the zoning with the zoning attribute table. 
Well, we can go ahead and change this to left outer join. So now we'll be creating a left outer join between the two tables and we'll be able to see our parcel again. So I'm going to go ahead and run or execute the statement and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to minimize my SQL Server Enterprise Manager and I'm going to refresh ArcMap. And as you see, once I refreshed ArcMap, our parcel came back because we used a left outer join to join the two tables together instead of the inner join. So now I can go ahead and use the identify button to identify my parcel. And we can see that the description is null. And again, that's because there is no com description in the zoning attribute table. So let's go ahead and look at how ArcMap, and we can create an inner join in ArcMap. So I'm going to switch back to my joins and relates data frame. I'm going to activate it again. And this time, we're going to go in and make a join between our parcels and zoning layer. And this time, when I choose join, I'm going to, again, specify the zone code from the parcels that we want to join to the zoning table, and we want to join on the zone code column from the parcels. And this time, I'm going to click Advanced. And now, I'm going to choose the Keep Only Matching Records option to create the inner join. Then I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm going to click OK, which is off, off of your screen. And then I'm going to refresh my, my uh, view. And as you can see, the parcel dropped out again because we just created an inner join using ArcMap. So finally, let's take a look at how cardinality plays a role in creating relationships between our tables. I'm going to go ahead and activate my cardinality data frame. And let's look at the tables that we have. We have the parcels table again, and this time we have an owner's table. So to take a look at the relationship, we're going to create a join or a relationship based on this parcels ID column from both of our tables. Let's take a look here. We have you know, parcel ID 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on in parcels. And in owners, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So we must have a one-to-many relationship between our parcels and our owner's attribute table. So let's see what happens when we create a join. Oops. I'm going to clear my selections just to clear everything out. And now I'm going to create a join on my parcels label, parcels layer. So I'm going to click join. This time I'm going to use that parcels ID field, use the owner's table, and again the parcels ID field from the owner's uh, attribute table. And I'm going to just use the, the left outer join as the default option, and then I'm going to click OK. Now we can see all the columns have been appended together into my parcels table, which is what occurs when you do a join. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Scroll over to the parcel owners. And let's look at number four. Well, it looks like in number four, we lost our second owner, because above in the owners table, we have Cunningham and Silvertan who own parcel number four. And down here in my parcels table, after doing the join, only Cunningham owns parcel number four. So I've, I've lost my, my second Silvertan record. So again, it's important to choose the correct type of cardinality when creating your joins, because if you remember, ArcMap supports a one-to-one -one and a many-to-one join only. So let's clear selections again. And this time, let's try creating a relate to see if this works a little better. So I'm going to re remove my join as we've seen before. Just go to remove join. And this time I'm going to create a relate. Again, I'm going to relate on the parcels ID column. And I'm going to name my relate parcels owners relate. So I know which relationship I'm working with with which tables. And again, you can see the tables remain separate because when you're creating relate, you create that relationship, but your tables remain separate. I'm going to go ahead and select parcel number four and see what we get for owners. So I'm going to go to options, refresh the relate that I've created, and we can see that both of my owners have been selected for parcel number four. So that one-to-many relationship has been maintained in my relate because, again, relates support all four types of cardinality. So 
let's go ahead and review what we've looked at. We've looked at different options available for joining with ArcMap. In ArcSD, you can either use an inner or an outer join. Again, with inner join, you're going to keep only those records that match. And with, excuse me, with an inner join, you're going to keep only those records that match. And with an outer join, you're going to keep all records, and regardless if they have a match or not. And you can use a left, right, or a full outer join. And then again, you also have to choose which type of relationship you're going to use depending upon cardinality. You have one to one, one to many, many to one, or a many to many cardinality choices for your your relationships. So let's go ahead and take about two to three questions from this section. Go ahead, Brenda. Here's a question from Michael in Boston, and he asks, how would I change the view definition if I'm using Oracle, DBA Studio, or SQL Plus? First, you have to create the view, Michael, using the um, SDE table minus or create. Once you've done that, you can use the database to drop the view, um, recode it. it. I use DB2. I'm mo most familiar with DB2, so I would go into the um, DB2 command line and um, inside of there rewrite the query and um, all of the metadata that you created um, when you did the SDE table minus or create view is still there. So all of the changes that you make at the database level are then applied to um, the view and you're ready to work with it again with your new parameters. Um, Matt in Norwalk asks, why would I use a relate instead of a join? What is the advantage? And Anu in uh, Raleigh asks a similar question, can a relate be a many-to-many -many association? And that's the first thing you want to consider when you're using a join. Um, instead of a relate is the cardinality. Um, with, a re with a join, you can do a one-to-one -one or a many-to-one cardinality. Uh, if you're using that many-to-many -many cardinality, then you want to make sure you're doing a relate. If you do a join and you had a many-many cardinality, you're going to lose data, uh, like in the demo that, that um, Kelda did where she lost one of her parcels. Kelda? All right, and James asks, how do I symbolize on a relate? And you cannot symbolize on a relate. You have to create a join to be able to symbolize on the table that you're creating a relationship with. So let's move on to the third topic in which we will discuss how to optimize the performance of your table relationships by understanding where your relationships take place, either on the client or the server, building indexes, and calculating statistics. So first, let's take a look at the relationships processed by the client, for example, ArcMap. The types of joins processed by a client include all of ArcMap outer joins, where you're using the keep all records option, and the advanced join options dialog and uh, the join dialog. Also, when you're doing joins across uh, connections or across different data formats, when I'm creating a join between you know, a shapefile and an ArcInfo uh, table, Arc map or the client is the one actually creating that, that join for you. Anytime you're doing relates or relationship classes as well, the client or arc map is the one who's maintaining that relationship for you. The benefits of having the client process your relationships is that this enables advanced functionality that you can join across uh, database connections. We can join different data formats together. The drawback is though is that it's potentially very slow especially if you're working with large data sets that can take ArcMap a while to symbolize on, on tables that you've joined together or to um, work with those relationships. And let's take a look at relationships processed by the server or your database. These types include ArcMap join when you're creating an inner join where you're using the keep only matching records option and it's across the same database connection. So if I I'm doing an interjoin between a personal geodatabase feature class and an ARC SDE uh, table, that will actually be performed by the client because in order to have the server or the database doing the join, you have to have both of those, uh, meet both of those criteria where you're doing the interjoin and it's across the same database connection. Anytime you're creating ARC IMS joins using the query or spatial query tag as well as ARC SDE views, the server or the database is the one always processing that relationship for you. Benefits to having the server process your relationships is that you get the best performance. It's much you know, quicker. It's, they're set up to handle large amounts of data, you know, large tables, and the server or the uh, hardware is usually much faster than, than ArcMap. 
The drawbacks are though is that this is going to require advanced knowledge. You have to know where to go into your database to be able to change that SQL statement, as well as you have to be aware of you know which users have which privileges to be able to go in and change those statements or create views and so on. A way to increase your performance of your relationships is by creating indexes. This will allows you to quickly search through your attribute or your spatial data. Creating index is just like using an index in the back of the book. It's much quicker to be able to, f to run to the back of the, the book and look at that index to find out what you're looking for instead of having to start from page one and go through the whole entire book to look for what you're trying to find. And these indexes can be created with Arc Catalog or an Arc SD using the SD table o create index command, as well as directly in the database that you're working with. And this is going to depend on if you're using SQL Server or Oracle. You're going to create these indexes different ways. And we recommend that when you're creating indexes, you always create indexes on your join columns. So in the uh, demo, we're joining the parcels in the zoning table with the zone code column. So we would recommend creating indexes on the zone code column in both the parcels and both the zoning attribute table. So you always want to index the join columns on both of your tables. And finally, another way to increase your performance of your relationships is to build statistics on the tables and the feature classes in your database. This is going to allow your database to choose the best execution plan for how to go about searching for records within your tables. The database will compute how many rows there are in each table, as well as how many unique values are in uh, your tables as well. It just helps the database go through and um, perform these joins and, and relationships for you. The statistics are created with Arc Catalog by right-clicking on your feature class or your table and choosing Analyze. Then you can choose to either analyze the F table and the business table or create statistics for both of those. You can also do create statistics using the Arc SD, SD table O update DBMS statistics command. And finally, you can create statistics right directly in your database. And again, this is going to depend on how you're going to do this. is going to depend on the database that you're working with. Finally, we suggest updating your statistics when your data changes significantly. When you load data into your database or when you compress a version during an editable database, it's always a good idea to rebuild your statistics or recalculate them to make sure your DBMS is using the best execution plan to go through your, uh, your tables to find your data for you. And in review, there are a few ways in which we can optimize the performance of your table relationships. This is, includes creating relationships on the server when at all possible, as well as creating indexes, creating indexes on both of the join columns for both of your tables that you're uh, putting together, as well as creating uh, statistics on your columns and your, uh, excuse me, on your tables and your feature classes. I think we have time for a couple of questions, so go ahead, Brenda. Um. Patty from Bowling Green asks, do relationship classes affect performance? And yes, they do. Whenever possible, you want to build rules into your geodatabase instead of using uh, relationships. Uh, that would include those pick lists the sub and the um, val value list, creating subclasses and domains, um, and then making cardinality rules about those. Uh, so yeah, they do affect your performance. Um, Patricia asks, the column, uh, she's, she's putting tables together and the column definition match, um, but she isn't getting any attributes. The, the columns are moving over to her uh, table, but she isn't seeing any attributes. First, you're getting the columns because they match. So the definitions are matching uh, during the join, so you're getting them joined together. But you need to look at your cardinality. If your cardinality is many to many, then you probably needed to do a relate instead of a join, and that's why none of your fields, you're not finding any values in your fields. Um, Kelda, did you have a couple? Um, Jeff in Wisconsin asked, why do you need to add object ID to the non-spatial SD table to be able to select by attributes? Well, the databases don't understand the, 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 um, the spatial side of uh, your GIS data. And so you have to give or add this object ID to your 
non-spatial data, so um, so the the system can go ahead and and manage the table properly. James asks, is there a way to make the relate static, keep the relate without always having to redo the relate each time the query is made? And that's by default. Uh, I think somebody else was asking um, about parcels. Will my parcels automatically update, uh, the, reflect the changes that are made to the ownership table? And, and yes, it will. These are static relationships that you're, that you're creating. Well, it looks like we're out of time. On behalf of ESRI, thanks for attending, and we hope you'll attend our next live training seminar on November 14th using Art Catalog Tips and Tricks.